Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a technique for displaying stock length edges inside of a drawing. So this was brought up by a customer who was curious if there was a method to display the stock length as well as the final cut length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a surface that shows the remainder of the cut of the stock length. So basically what is yet to be trimmed. So I'm going to look at the parameters. I've got a couple simple parameters. I've got a cut length and the stock length is just in inch increments. So whatever the cut length is, if it's not an even five inches, it would of course get rounded up to the nearest inch, which is five. So if it was five and a half, this would be six. So that's how that's going to work. And we've got an iLogic rule to verify that, but I'm going to start out by making my sketch so I can create the surface. <clears throat> so it's going to be pretty simple, and you'll see when we get to the drawing why I'm deciding to create a surface. So I'm just going to project those three edges. I can then extrude as a surface, so make sure your surface mode is on. Choose that, and then I have to make sure it goes the proper direction. There's our surface. And in this case, the proper direction is going to be stock length minus the cut length. And so whatever that computes out to be, in this case, three quarters, that's how long I want the surface. Now I'm also going to name the surface something special, and I've already cheated and I've already called it extrusion trimmed amount surface, so I know it's a surface. And then I'm going to take a look at the iLogic rule. I've already written the iLogic rule just to save a little bit of time. And it's a pretty basic rule. But basically, <clears throat> I want to check the cut length and see if it's an integer. That's what this int means. So I'm saying if it's not an integer, so that the cut length does not equal the integer value of the cut length, then I'm saying the stock length equals the ceiling of the cut length. And ceiling is a function that just pushes a decimal number always up to the next whole number. So we're going to force stock length to be the next whole number up from cut length. And then I'm going to make sure that that feature is turned on. And sometimes when you're suppressing features, the order matters. So if it's else, meaning if it is an integer, then I want to make sure I turn off the feature first before I adjust the stock length value. Otherwise, there could be problems with the feature failing. So I like to suppress the feature first, then adjust the cut length. So again, it is not a very complicated iLogic rule. And basically, it's just protecting me in case that it ends up being a whole number. So I've got that set to run. So if we just test it really quickly, we say the cut length is 5. Stock length equals 5. The feature gets suppressed. <laughs> and it's barely there, but you know, yeah, so just different ways that you can do it. That's probably a little bit easier to see. <laughs> you can kind of see that surface a little better that way. So that's how the rule works. So I'll just go back to what I had before. <clears throat> so shape is going to be the uh, cut length. So the solid and then the surface is what's the difference between the stock length and the cut length. Awesome. Well, I've got a drawing already queued up, so I'm just going to go ahead and supply a base view. And there's a couple of reasons why I like to use the surface, because if we look at the design, we can include surface bodies, and then I'm going to show the hidden view. So a couple of reasons why I like to do that. You can see now with this particular view, it shows me what the remaining solid is, and then I get this interesting shape. So I just did that graphically, so there may be a little bit less confusion by somebody looking at the print, uh, what's going on. But we can additionally, if we expand out the sheet and expand out the view, we've got the different features. So this is uh, another potential benefit. I can now click on that surface, right click, and I can select as edges. So I'm only going to get those edges for the surface. And then on the annotate tab, by default, that turns up as visible geometry. 
but maybe I want it to be like hidden, or I'll say hidden narrow. And now it's very clear that that's something different than the original solid geometry. And then we could dimension this, so we could say this as the cut length, and then we could dimension from this edge to this edge. And we could even type in a, a, a value, right, like stock, oops, stock length or something. You know, whatever we would want to do there. Go ahead and hit OK, and there's your stock length. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. It, this is the manual way to do it. We could, of course, automate the drawing if we wanted to, so that if it found a surface feature, we could maybe automatically grab its uh, line work and change the value, but at least this way you can manually do it when you want to show that extra bit of stock length that's being trimmed. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Hope you found this helpful and have a blessed day.